Hello. I wanted to show you how I created my track. Um, and just sort of how I use LMMS to make my music and the weird things that I do. I've used this program for more than a decade. Very comfortable with it. It's free. It's open source. I don't use any external VSTs. I use pretty much all stock plugins. I use a couple of random sounds, but again, most of the sounds that I use are either ripped from some program years ago, or a lot of them are hydrogen. Some of them are hydrogen. Some of them are just random, whatever comes with the program, and some of them are from an old free drum program from yonks ago, uh, which I don't even know if it exists anymore, so whatever. Um, but yeah, so I want to show you how I make my music and i'm going to use my most my, my latest track which is agent orange uh which is a kind of response to napalm by pendulum i'm a big pendulum fan so it's rock fusion drum and bass just like they are uh but it's it's kind of inspired by metric as well i've got quite a few uh things going on but it's actually deceptively simple uh there's really not a lot going on here a um, couple of things that are automated. The magic really is how I sidechain and how I sort of tweak things in odd ways. So uh, I'll get over the main thing. So the main thing that's in this is some guitar. So if I just isolate these two guitar tracks, uh, this is what the guitars sound like. And those are actual guitars. So I used a, a Fender Squire with two humbuckers. I put it through a cheap uh, basic guitar amp thing called a pock rock because I'm poor and that's what I do. Uh, so I used that and I just recorded it on Audacity. And the way this works, the way I've got it sounding the way it does, is a few weird tricks. So first of all, uh, here's the just the guitar person. It's actually just a MIDI... It's just a MIDI sample. So if I zoom out here, you'll see it's actually really big. I basically sat and just recorded the same section over and over and over again. And then inside LMMS, I just picked the part that I really liked. And this one sounded the best to me, the most in time and the most uniform. That's it. That's as simple as that. Um, and then I've got a second guitar here again, all the same, and I've just done exactly the same with this. So let me find this. So the only difference with this is that this is a little bit more messy. So to clear it up, what I've done is, let me find it, uh, trigger. So this here, this grey track, so as this plays, this is triggering the guitar. So if I just, uh, let me find a bit where it's just them two. Here we go, like here. So you can see here it's jumping up and down. it turned off and it turned on and the other guitar doesn't need it because the other guitar was quite uniform and I actually played it good <laughs> so I didn't need to add it there but that's how I got it and then I just EQ'd and so this guitar has a bit more beef to it And the overlap uh, to keep it going and then this one is a bit more tinny a lot more tinny actually uh, but it's it, again it's triggered so it sounds louder than that so that's the guitars it's very simple and here I've got um this this just basically mutes one of the guitar tracks so 
So all I've done is tied that, that mute, to an automation. And you can do that by just holding down control, clicking and dragging. And you can basically just drag any control anywhere. And it's fantastic. I love that you can do that. You can just grab any control you want. You can solo something. You can mute something. You can have it timed to the time signatures. You can randomly change time signatures. If you really wanted to, you could create an LFO and attach the time signature to an LFO and then just have it completely randomize the time signature as the song goes on. The purpose of which I'm not quite clear and I, I sort of am going off on one, but you can do that. It's very powerful. And all I've done is just mimic the guitar parts with a sort of just a random sound and then tied the track so on here this is how it works so under effects i've got a peak controller uh the wave shaper doesn't do much but it does make it a more harsh sound which makes the actual response a little bit sharper and depending on frequencies and things like that, it gets really really granular and really technical to put it bluntly you can change the sound and like the isolate frequencies and things as they're at different levels like in different pitches or different frequencies it changes the amplification or you can have it so that it keeps it all uniform it's a bit weird uh but you can you can do that uh but it's just basically a peak controller and instead of dipping it down which you're hearing a lot of dance music this just kicks it up that's all it does so it's as simple as that uh, the bass is quite simple. The bass is several basses in one. So if I go here. And again, it's um, tight chained. Uh, you can hear it here as well. So this is quite simple i've got i mean excuse the inappropriate names so i've got this nice and simple and then it just has a simple bit there Hang on. i was gonna have it pitch up and down i did try the slides but with the attack on the slides it makes it sound really out of time and sloppy and i didn't like it so i just didn't do it and at the end of the day you know it's my song i can do what i want uh this is this is another one where it has it's essentially simulating portamento just by adding a slide there to this one note uh, and then again it doesn't do it at the end And that's just a triple oscillator. A lot of the sounds I use are just triple oscillators. I've called it Pendulum 1 because it's it's stolen from a Pendulum song I was listening to. Um, sounds quite cool. Uh, and again, I use the Wave Shaper a lot. I watched a tutorial ages ago on making drum and bass, bass sounds. And they advised just using the wave shaper so make whatever sound you want and then add a wave shape to it draw in a random shape uh just mess with it and you can get some really versatile sounds just by changing some of these parameters so i can have one preset that does every sound i want it to but now i can't remember what i said it to uh, which is fun uh can i reset can i reset that can i reset yeah so apparently that's what it was um but yeah whatever uh but other than that's right so whatever we'll go with it and then this is just a default again it's got the same things it's just got that portamento slide there and this is this is just a default sound. This comes with the program. I think I've just changed the attack. Yeah, I've just slightly tweaked some of this. Uh, uh I've just changed it slightly. That's all I've done. Uh, and my lead saw is just a super saw. 
I use supersars and everything. Uh, oh, this is a slightly edited supersar, isn't it? Wait, it would play if I didn't have that on. Adds a bit of suspense because it's not predictable. It's not as predictable as you think, which I think makes it kind of more interesting. Uh, so it's just that. That's all the Super Souls doing. And then there's a bit here where it's a bit more staccato. is controlled by this so this is a this is a side chain as well so again a lot of the time in dance music you have a four to the floor so it goes one two three four and there's so dips on the four this doesn't this dips on the kick the snare and the first kick of the song the, the second kick of the beat so it's ba 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 but it's like that. That's what it does there, uh, which creates a kind of odd sense. If I solo that, if I had a bit that actually has this, I kind of have this habit where I'll add a side chain drop right after. So I'll let it have some release. I'll let it play out and then I'll dip it. So it'll go like bam and then it'll drop. So it'll drop on like the second beat. Uh, which just gives it a kind of odd dynamic. I do it all the time in a lot of my music and it works really well. And then the drums are the most boring part of this song. There's really not much to this song at all. Uh, the drums are really simple. So the drums, um, a lot of it rides on top of a breakbeat because it's easy to have things on top of a breakbeat and it helps. So I just used uh, a breakbeat called Fool's Gold. Sounds like this. Simple. And all I've done is added some kicks. And I've got several kicks, several snares, a couple of hi-hats. So if I take out the the breakbeat it sounds quite simple sounds okay and then with the breakbeat it just elevates it slightly not too much just enough and then I've got this which I think is the same just without the rides and then I've got a bit here with the... I think it's just this. These just crash sounds. Really simple stuff. I don't really like them. They don't sound very good. But they work. So... Um, the only other stuff I've got is a couple of weird things. So... Uh, there's a couple of fills. Um, and the drums are just heavily compressed simple have a look compressed and eq'd so the compression that's the compression so oh it's actually not that heavy it doesn't look that heavy but it sounds heavily compressed so you know and then some eq just to accentuate sort of the low end the beef of the kick and the high end the sort of sizzly snares and that the, the, the sizzle of the snare and the, the sort of ting of the hi-hat to brighten them a little bit and just make them pop a little more that's all i've done there um and the only other thing which is there is this weird siren sound which is an other i believe and again these are deceptively simple. So Garfunkel is a default sound that comes with the triple oscillator now. 
Now, normally it goes all over the place. Uh, I'm not going to go in there. I'm not going to find it. But it usually goes up and down all over the place. And I've just changed it so that the arpeggiator just does an octave, the same one. It just repeats the note. That's all it does. And then to get it to bend in pitch, I've just added a pitch bend in the piano roll. And it sounds like something you'd hear in war. And I've done the same with another basic preset called Invaders Must Die from the Bit Invader. Which just sounds like, I always think it sounds like a telephone. It sounds awful. But it's just that, and again, done exactly the same. It's the same track, basically, just with a different sound. And I should have panned them, but I didn't do. I think I've got, I've got something on here. Stereo, like, yeah, I've got a stereo effect on it. So without it, and then with. Adds a bit of depth to it, and a crap ton of reverb as well. And together, they sound really good. <laughs> And again, they're affected by this uh, pulse. And that's basically it. I've got a couple of sonar sounds. Well, that just comes with LMS. That's just a default sound. A couple of crash cymbals, a basic riser. And I think that's just a basic white noise. Yes, yeah, so it's just white noise with a band pass. Yeah. Just going up there and then down again when you release that's it it's quite nice doesn't need any reverb has a nice tail to it stops when i want it to doesn't interfere too much sounds okay and that's it. And then I've just got things like reverse uh, crash symbols. So it's just a crash symbol that you can right click and you can reverse it. That's it. It's really deceptively simple. Really deceptively simple. <laughs> That's it. So that's that's how I make my music. Um, not very many tracks. There are ones that have lots more tracks, but that's only because I'm doubling instruments and panning things and adding weird automation to things. Apart from that, this is, this is one of the most simplest but most effective done I've re one I've done recently. And there we go. That's it. Hope you enjoyed.